I read an article this weekend about how Uber has paired up with Hyundai. It's like uh, Sunday, Hyundai, Hyundai. Uber has hooked up with Hyundai to create a flying taxi car service that they plan on releasing in 2023. Now, what's cool about this flying taxi car service that they're working on is that ultimately there will be no drivers. This will all be automated. And what they will do is they will program the taxis to take you wherever it is that you need to go. You'll go into your phone. You'll go into the app. You'll plug in your destination and it will come pick you up. Now, what's really neat about this is the reason, the only reason that this is possible, which I do want to take just a second and say thanks, Casey Rossiter, Keith McKenzie, um, all of you. There's 130 people watching live in here today. Uh, we're close to a record. If you haven't done so already, hit that share button. This is incredible. But they have an autopilot system. And see, this is possible because of the ability to program a plan their ability to input programming to tell this thing where actually it'll be your ability to tell it where to go is what makes it all possible if it wasn't for the gps system there this wouldn't even be a concept this wouldn't even be a thought if it wasn't for the ability to type in programming now see we as human beings we're the exact same way. See, you having a plan is the GPS for your life. You see, typically in life, when we go astray, it is when we lack direction. That's why with our young people, we always have programs, right? Like we rise them early. When you were young, you probably had to get up early and get ready for school. Maybe you were a bus rider. Maybe your parents took you to school. Maybe you were lucky enough like me to be able to walk uphill in the snow both ways, <laughs> as they say. Whatever it was, you typically had a routine and a plan and you had to wake up and you had to get up early and then you had to go to school and there was structure and there was routines and you knew the plan from one class to the next. You were going to go from English and then maybe social studies and you were going to have a physical education class that was going to make sure that you exercised and then there was going to be a math class and then maybe some liberal arts and then even after school there was typically some type of plan whether it be athletics like basketball or football or track or soccer or maybe the plan was for you to be a part of speech and debate or some other extracurricular activity like for example student government or maybe a peer counselor and the reason that we have these systems in place and the reasons that schools were designed this way is that we understand that when a child lacks direction it is hard for him to succeed or her to succeed in life. Now see, the same thing is true for you, but even when we grow up, we still need this system. We still need this plan. We still need the activities to progress in a certain way that it makes sure to tackle all the different areas of our life, mind, body, and spirit. The difference is when we grow up, there's no one, uh, there's no one to hold us accountable. You see, there's no one holding you accountable to you, your bills and your financing. There's no one holding you accountable to how you parent your children. There's no one holding you accountable to making sure that you take care of yourself health-wise. There's no one holding you accountable to make sure that you sleep properly. You're on your own. It's up to you. And like I said earlier, if you can't trust yourself to get it done... Who can you trust? You see, this programming, this GPS system, this map, this plan, this direction that you need to have in your life, I believe that it all starts in the morning. I believe that when you start programming early on in your day, first thing, it has lasting and life-changing effects. 
Now, see, in order for us to have a good morning, it is incredibly important that we understand sleep and the decisions that we make the night before. You see, that's why a lot of people right now that are doing the morning five challenge, they are struggling. They're maybe struggling to hit this. They keep continuing to hit a snooze button or they had a tough time over the weekend. That might have been you. You might have been on day 10, but you fell off and now you're back on day two. And typically what most people don't realize when they start the morning five challenge is you're going to have to change the decisions you make the night before. In order to be sex successful the morning of. So starting to program our GPS is going to start with an understanding of sleep. So I want to share some, there's some interesting facts that you may or may not know about sleep. And I'm going to share those with you and give you a better understanding of what sleep really is. Because I think a lot of people misunderstand this. But here's some interesting facts as I was reading and studying up on sleep and patterns and cycles and habits and so on and so forth. I read something. Did you know that 20% of people dream 100% in black and white? Isn't that crazy? They have no color to their dreams whatsoever. I also learned that the mammal that sleeps the most is a squirrel, <laughs> which is crazy, right? The squirrel sleeps 19 and a half hours a day. 19 and a half hours a day. But it kind of makes sense. I, th I think about it like the people that are like, squirrel, 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 right? Like we're all over the place. That's got to be exhausting. <laughs> It's exhausting for us as humans. It's got to be exhausting for this little mammal. But these squirrels, they sleep 19 and a half hours a day. I also learned that a giraffe is the mammal that sleeps the least. A giraffe sleeps only 1.9 hours a night. Isn't that crazy? 1.9 hours. And I thought Scott Simons and myself were pretty powerful. My goodness, 1.9. I also learned some other stats. I learned that... Uh, when it comes to people that sleep less than seven hours a night, this is the percentages based on where you are in America of people that sleep less than seven hours a night. So as you can see, if you look at Kentucky there, Kentucky is filled like almost 47% of the people sleep less than seven hours a night there in Kentucky. I don't know if that has anything to do with hashtag rise and grind being from Kentucky. I'm not sure, but I do see that. I also see that those boys up there in Wisconsin and Wyoming, they seem to be sleeping you know, this, there's less of them that sleep less than seven hours. I'm just saying, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, Tanky. <laughs> but I thought that was really, really interesting. But understanding sleep is so important because statistically, you're going to sleep for about 28.3 years of your life. A third of your life is going to be dedicated to sleep. Now, that being the case, I want to make sure that we use that sleep wisely, that we understand it completely. It's such a large portion of your life. You see, sleep is supposed to be a tool for you. You see, we sleep in these sleep cycles ever since the caveman days. You see, back, back in the, the caveman days, sleeping, going into a coma for a long period of time while sleeping outdoors. You didn't have things like ring or, or ADT security systems. And so back in the day when we used to sleep in dangerous environments, we created these patterns within ourselves called sleep cycles. And the way that a sleep cycle works is we initially fall asleep. We are in a light sleep and we travel over time, over a period of roughly 100 minutes, down into a sleep called rapid eye movement, R-E-M. Now, this rapid eye movement sleep, sleep cycle, that's when the body actually is generating the most recovery. That's when your cells and your blood is performing on fixing and repairing all the different things in your body during this R-E-M cycle. Then from there, we, we come back out into a lighter sleep 
basically to be aware, make sure there's no saber tooth tigers or anything like that that are about to eat us. And then we go back into another cycle. Now, each of these cycles typically last between two and three hours a night on average. And the better understanding you have of your particular cycle, because everybody is different based on what you eat, when you go to sleep, your location, so on and so forth. Based on everybody being a little bit different, you want to be conscious of your particular sleep cycle. Because when you can dial it in to where you go to bed consistently and wake up at that lighter period of your cycle, when your body's already naturally waking up, if you can set your alarm, on, and or even at times you'll get to a point where you want have to but if you can set your alarm at that precise and specific moment when you're at your peak wake in your sleep cycle you can master and dominate this thing called sleep i myself am a self-proclaimed master of my sleep at 11 30 i close my eyes and instantly go to sleep at 3 50 a.m i'm able to wake up four hours 20 minutes later completely refreshed ready to rock and roll that's what it's supposed to feel like now see if you're waking up and you're groggy and it's taking you an hour to be able to open your eyes and you're having to pour gallons of coffee down your throat then it might be an issue with your cycle you may be going to bed too early you might be going to bed too late you might be waking up too early you might be waking up too late so there are resources online there are apps you can use on your phone or your apple watch there are things that you can do to understand your sleep cycle now why am i so adamant about this because listen sleep is a tool it is not to be misused. The reason step one of the morning five is to not hit the snooze button is because when you are rising out of your sleep cycle and you hit that snooze button, it sends you into another one. It sends you immediately into a sleep cycle. It is a lie. It sells you 10 extra minutes of sleep in trade. You're now going to spend the next two hours feeling groggy because you hit the snooze button. You see, I want you to plan with purpose. I want you to understand that sleep is a tool. Like even the Bible refers to sleep as being a tool, not something that you're supposed to just do lethargically. Proverbs, Proverbs 6, 9 says, how long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? It also says in Proverbs 20, 13, do not love sleep or you will grow poor. Stay awake and you will have food to spare. You see, to unlock the greatness and the superhuman that exists in you, you must understand that sleep is supposed to be a place for dreams, a place for lucid visions. It should be something that you enjoy thoroughly in small, not, I don't want to say small, but something that you enjoy thoroughly in complete segments, not too long, not too short. You see, you should wake up after sleeping exhilarated, excited, ready to attack your day. If you plan with purpose, once you master sleep as a part of your plan, you can dominate, my friend. These whole conversations that we have of busy and tired, I want to extract those from your life. When you ask somebody today, how are they? They're probably going to tell you busy or tired. And I want to extract that from you because when you're busy or when you're tired, you cannot properly fulfill your purpose. I need you at peak performance. I need you at your greatest. Your friends, your family members, your co-workers, they all need you at your greatest. Because, see, you, my friend, are actually a child of God. You don't belong to self. You belong to him. And as a child of God, you have the ability and responsibility to be the absolute best version of you that you can be. Because it matters. The decisions you make every single day, they matter. They make an impact in people's lives. 